Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. start the lecture number 2 which is entitled history of natural dyes. As we have seen in the first lecture that what is the general overview about natural dyes. Now one by one we will go into the details and the first detail starts with the history. When did people start recognizing that there are colors which are available in nature and that is what we will study because it is important for us to know the history of natural dyes. This is a course related to natural dyes and dyeing. We are going to learn a lot of things related to what natural dye stuff is, what color is, and how do we interpret color? How do we see color? What are the complementary colors and so on? So, it is a detailed treatise on natural dyes and innovative dyeing processes. We will also take an overview of synthetic dyes briefly and then go on to the details of natural dyes, their sources, their structure elucidation, their extraction and how they can be used in a more innovative manner for dyeing. So, let us begin this course on natural dyes and natural dyeing and let us start the second lecture, not really the first lecture was related to the general overview of natural dyes. This lecture is related to history of dye stuff after a brief introduction to natural dyes. What is color and what are its uses? Because we need to first understand the very basic color and its various uses come over the horizon from prehistorical period by all cultural groups and on all major land masses. It is not just in India that people invented colors. It, the ancestor of man must have noticed perhaps with or without understanding the abundance of multitude of color worn by nature which have been fascinating them. Even when we look around we see beautiful flowers of different colors, of different shape and size. Not all of them are sources of natural dyes, but at least a large number of them are surely there. Every civilization has its myth and association with color. Aristotle, the great philosopher of 4th century BC, considered yellow and blue to be the two primary colors related to life polarities. Physiologically and psychologically, however, black and white colors are the ones because they produce visual sensation and they are strong effects on other colors either by mixing or by juxtaposition. The greatest position or contribution to our understanding of color came from men whose work combines science and mathematics with art, metaphysics and theology, indeed the sum of human study. So, it is the perception of color which integrates everything, it integrates science, mathematics metaphysics and theology all put together to understand what are colors. 
two polarities of colors. Now, you will also appreciate that color was known and observed from prehistoric time and it was man who first noticed this variation and it was through the visual effect. Secondly, every civilization had its association of color. It was not that any civilization grew up without observation of color. So, every civilization was observing the nature and the effect of color was already being noticed. And the third point that you know, people may have a different perception about color, but they all boil down to the fact that there is a black, there is a white and all other colors lie in between these two exhibit or there is yellow and blue and all the colors lie between these two extreme colors. So, the polarities could be black and white or yellow and blue, but all other colors fall in this region. Whatever be the situation, there are two polarities and whether we consider black and white as two polarities or yellow and blue as two polarities, but color spectrum ranges between these two polarities. Now, how do we describe a colorant? Definition of a colorant is used by a name from material such as dyes and pigments. Ability of natural colorant to be used as, as natural dyes has been known since ancient times. So, now this colorant is a common term, it can be used for dyes and pigments and definitely they are different. Because if dyes and pigments would have been the same, they would have been called only dyes or only pigments. But when they are called differently, that means there is a subtle difference between what is a dye and what is a pigment. And that these are two different entities, how different they are we will learn during the course of our lecture. But right now it is important to know that colorant is a common name and either referring to dyes or to pigments. Ability of natural colorant to be used as natural dyes has been known since ancient times. Why? Because initially there was no synthetic dyes. It was all if there was a color source, it was through natural source. In the beginning, the synthetic dyes were not present. It was only after 1897 that synthetic dyes came into existence. And natural sources could be from plants, animals or minerals as we saw in the last lecture. Plants which had parts either in terms of their flower or their seed or their fruit or their bark or their leaves. Very rarely people exploited the roots. Why? Because once you uproot the root, then the plant is killed. But if you use the upper part, aerial part of the plant, any of the part of the plant that is flower, fruits, seeds, leaves, stem, then that is renewable and hence they were only exploring the upper aerial parts of the plants. Extractable colors, even roots have color, but rarely they used to extract colorants from the roots. These are various sources from where the color can be extracted from the plants. Similarly, animals can have different types of shells which are colored and or some kind of covering on their body which have some color from which the color can be extracted. The dye can be generally described as color substance that has affinity for substrate to which it is applied. Thus, the common te terminology of dye is that it is a chemical substance which can have affinity 
for another substance when applied to. So, that is why dye is used for dyeing. The dye is usually used as an aqueous solution or may require an mordant to improve the fastness of the dye on the fiber. In contrast, a pigment generally has no affinity for the substrate and is insoluble. So, there is a basic difference between a dye and a pigment. A dye is soluble and usually an aqueous solution is made when dyeing process is carried out and pigment is insoluble colorant which does not dissolve in water and hence cannot be used for dyeing. So, the basic difference between dye and pigment is very clear. Therefore, a dye is soluble and has affinity for the substrate, pigment is insoluble and has no affinity for the substrate when applied to fabric. Coloration has many purposes. We think that it is only textile dyeing which is important, but that is not true. Vegetation was the main source of coloring matter. Biochemists have identified that the vital activities of a plant is also dependent on colorants in the way that the bright colors of the flowers are important in attracting insects and birds to act and act as a pollinator. When these are used for dyeing fabric, they not only impart color to the fabric, but also act as antifungal agent or antibacterial agent, whereby they impart protection to the fabric against bacterial and fungal infections or as moth repellent. Some dyes like indigo has a cooling sensation. So, apart from coloration or imparting color to the fabric, they also have other roles to play with such as being an antimicrobial agent or an anti repellent agent or a cooler. Apart from being a source of vegetation, being a source of dye, it also brings in many added advantages. Some of these dyes have this special property of antifungal and antibacterial agent and because of that, once it is applied to the fabric, it also brings in antibacterial and antifungal property and it can reduce any kind of biotic attack from the fungus or the bacteria or the moth. So, you see that it is not only helpful in giving a beautiful color to the fabric after dyeing, but it is also bringing along some other additional properties which could be very useful. And especially if I am naturally dyeing a medical garment and it is antibacterial or antifungal in nature, the colorant, then definitely it will not create any biotic attack and often blood stains and such things are adhering to the aprons of the nurses and that is something that can be avoided or will not be attacked by these because they have been dyed by natural dyes which had these inherent properties. So, now going back to the historical background, the art of dyeing was an old as old as human civilization. From the historical records we get to know this. It is learnt that natural colorants are available to people during Greco-Roman periods. Our Vedas, the Atharv Ved carries description of natural dyes. The use of natural dyeing material is evident with the wall paintings of Ajanta, Alora, Sitha, Vasal and they still demonstrate the efficacy of 
dying craft that had been inherited by ancient people in India. So, you see it is as old as a description which was mentioned in one of the Vedas of Athar Ved. There are it carries a description of how people try to dye fabric and do art on the wall with these natural colorants. So, this history is already preserved and still in the remains of the caves of Ajanta and Alora, the painting on the wall show that all the colors that were used in that time were from natural sources. One for the simple reason that synthetic dyes did not exist at that time. It was only natural colorants that they used at that time. The archaeological samples collected from various museums all over the world have been analyzed and they have been found to be one of one or the other natural dye. So, it is well established fact that these are all from natural sources. The ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs that is the stylized painting contains a thorough description of the extraction of the natural colorants. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs contain a thorough description of not only extraction of the dyes, but also their application in dyeing. So, there are furthermore evidences that there were only natural dyes and how they were extracted, how they were used for dyeing, all these descriptions are available. Further development extending over thousands of years have moved to rather complicated dyeing process and high quality dyeing. So, it is as old as a very ancient Egyptian method that is how the first it started that first method of dyeing was carried out by Egyptian civilization and they described the natural dyeing process in great details. And over a period of time as the science advanced from time to time new methods were incorporated into this ancient methodology and more complicated became the dyeing process, because every time new methods were added on to the earlier method, there was improvisation of the methods, but nevertheless it always was for the sake of improvement. Primitive uses of natural dyes. Now, use, use of natural dyes ever since primitive people could create they have been enduring to add color to the world around them. They use natural matter to stain hides, decorate shells and feathers and paint their story on the walls of the ancient caves. Scientists have been able to date the black, white, yellow and reddish pigment made from ochre used by primitive man in the cave paintings to over 15 1000 BC. And as I told you earlier in the first lecture, BC means before Christ. So, it has been an old and as primitive as the date tells us. And from that period, the civilized or the process of civilization had begun and people were using different sources of natural dyes to color not only their clothes, but also the hides that they were wearing which was made out of leather. Earlier method of natural dyeing, let us now look into what was being practiced at that time. They were also decorating shells and they were writing their own stories on the walls of the caves with these colored paints or dyes. Natural dyes have been used since ancient times for coloring and printing fabrics until the middle of the last century. Most of the dyes were derived from plants and animal sources by long elaborate processes. Among these indigo, tyrant purple, 
alizarin, cochineal, logwood dyes were popularly used and deserve special mention. Now let us look and try when we were learning the history of dyeing, let us also understand how they used these dyes at that time, what was their methodology that was adopted by them. Since the difference in mordenting different fibers had been mentioned, we would spend a little moment on the historic nature of the fibers available at that time. Wool, a protein based fiber has been found in Europe dating back to 2000 BC. So, you see it is first important to understand what are the fibers that were used for dyeing and then see the fiber and dye connectivity or affinity unless and until we understand or have an understanding of the material on which the dye has been applied to, we cannot understand the entire dyeing process. Cotton, different natural materials or natural fibers used for natural dyeing. Cotton was a common medieval fabric in both dyed and natural colors, was processed by both professional manufacturers and housewives. Silk being protein based fiber was imported from China to Persia as early as 400 to uh, 600 BC. It became quite popular in the late middle ages and a major silk manufacturing center was set up in France, Spain and Italy. So, you see most of these fibers were also natural because there was no synthetic fiber available at this at that primitive time. These silk production centers also became the centers of dye technology as most silk was dyed and required the highest quality dyes available. Cotton was considered a luxury fabric as it was imported all the way from India and usually dyed or painted before it was shipped. So, we were the pioneers in cotton, but silk and wool were actually established or used by other countries. But nevertheless, whenever silk was imported or cotton was exported from India, it would either be dyed or painted before it was actually sent out. So, we were pioneers of cotton but silk and wool were imported and whenever they were transported from one country to the other, they were usually transported when they were already dyed or printed, not as a raw material. Now, there is a difficulty in preserving the art of dyeing. Why? Because not everything that was practiced was written down. So, how was natural dyeing practiced? Scientists are almost certain that dyeing was practiced throughout the world, but it is difficult to obtain the proof of the two of this two reasons. First, not all cultures left written records of their practices and second, because of the wide variance of environmental conditions and degree of geological disturbances it is not easy to find well preserved evidences of dyed textile in many archaeological sites. So, people at that time never thought of future that any time this knowledge would be required. As a result, you know they did they forgot to preserve these methods by writing it down and therefore, they are not many archaeological sites which have these details uh, readily available. So, now to be able to understand or to know the history of dyes and dyeing, it is not a, an easy task. Why? Because for two reasons it is quite difficult. First thing is that the cultures did not preserve, pre preserve their uh, methodologies, what they were practicing as art of dyeing 
And secondly, because of the geological condition variation, they had different climatic conditions. So, their art of dyeing varied from one country to another country and because it was not well documented, it was kind of difficult to per preserve. So, because every country had its own flora, even within our own country, as I told you in the last lecture that when we start from northeast uh, states and we go down south, we find they are at different altitudes and these altitudes bring in diversity in flora and fauna that is present or that is capable of growing in that area. And therefore, it was not possible to uh, you know say that everywhere everything grows. So, the plants that were growing in certain climatic condition were utilized by the local people of that area. Cotton dyeing however, started in India. Cotton was also valued because of the brightness and color fastness of the dyes used to color it and also for it was used for making candle wicks. So, cotton was very good material for dyeing. Samples of cotton fabric have been found in India and Pakistan dating 3000 BC. Of course, at that time Pakistan did not exist, it was only India. But what is presently now known as Pakistan was a part of India and as an extended part of India. Their samples of cotton have been obtained which are dated as back as 3000 before Christ, but it did not appear in Europe until 4th century. So, one thing is established that cotton was our primary fabric and therefore, we have an art of dyeing cotton mainly, but European countries it was silk and wool which were all protein based fabric and they have completely different chemistry of dyeing. So, what we develop for cotton dyeing is not directly applicable for silk and wool because the functional groups on the silk and wool fabric are quite different from the functional group of cotton and it is these functional groups on the surface of the fabric which hold on to the colorant with the help of the mordant. Now, more evidences are gradually being uh, available from history. Cotton weaving establishments were formed in Italy in the 13th and 14th century as late as that, but they did not make a significant economic impact on the industry as they produced a coarser quality of fabric than the imported fabric which was sent from India and therefore, had difficulty in obtaining a good supply of cotton fiber and having a good market. Although it started in Italy in the 13th and 14th century, they could not match the equality or the quality content that was exported from India and therefore, it was not very high quality. A Chinese text from 3000 BC lists dye recipes to obtain red, black, yellow for silk. Ancient Indian texts describe several different yellows dye stuff, how to obtain reds from the wood and bark of certain trees and also notes on the use of indigo to create blue on cotton. In Central and South America, they dyed bass fiber that is from the plant fibers in shades of red and purple with the bodies of the cochineal insect. So, as mentioned earlier that the insect body had a lot of color which was in the range of red and purple and that was being used mainly in the Central and South America. Greek art artifacts from the Greek civilization also show 
that there was a use of natural dyes. A Greek artifact known as Stockholm Piperus details dyed stuff and techniques in almost a recipe fashion as it was practiced in Egypt in the 3rd and 4th century. The great detail in which the preparation of fibers and dyeing material and the dyeing process itself was recorded has led scholars to believe that it had to have been practiced one thousands of years previously in order to raise the process to such a science and art because it is only through repeated experimentation that these processes are developed. They are not developed overnight and to be able to develop a process which is foolproof requires enormous amount of experimentation and that is what it is indicating. However, the process that was documented was much later and therefore, it shows that it is very evolved process which has been documented. It discusses mordenting the fiber using alum, copper and iron oxides to darken or sadden the red, blue, green, purple dyes as well as the occasional use of tin and zinc. It describes over 10 different recipes for using alkanet root as a dye employing camel and sheep urine, lentils, vinegar, wild cucumber and barley malt among others add aids of producing beautiful colors which means they had a concept of using auxiliary even at that time. The camel and sheep urine, lentils, vinegar, wild cucumber, barley malt are all auxiliaries to the dyeing process. They are not dye sources. Evolving dyeing technology has not been an easy job. They use various types of combination, not only they use metal mordenting, but they also use a very common substance for enhancing the color which were rich in some chemicals like urine, sheep urine, lentils, vinegar. Therefore, they were trying to make a very unique kind of permutation and combination for dye affinity, for enhancing the dye affinity. So, this concept of enhancing the dye uh, affinity was already there. Excavated Coptic textile dating from 4th to 6th century show use of weld to produce yellow, madder and weld to give dark purple and blue from indigo. Scientists have been able to date a red dye obtained from Egyptian madder root from the 14th century BC. So, there have been lots of evidences and what I am trying to draw your attention to that the history of dye stuff is very rich and that it is not only, it is not a recent science, it is very, very old science which was practiced by primitive men and over a period of time it evolved to what we see today is a very advanced dyeing technology. So, what I am trying to draw your attention that there is a great deal of evidences that are available. When we try to collate them, we try to understand that the natural dyeing history starts way back in from 15,000 BC. There are Chinese and Egyptian records available. The earliest written record of the use of natural dyes was found in China dated 2600 BC and chemical text of the red fabric found in the tomb of the king of Tutankhamun in Egypt showed 
that the presence of alizarine, a pigment extracted from madder was observed. Tyrian purple, a well renowned natural dye, occupied prominent position in Roman history. Indigo has been used in the textile industry for several last several thousand years. It is one of the earliest dye stuffs recorded in history and it still remains extremely important and of extreme importance even today. Even today the entire denim industry uses indigo. So, how important this dye source has been from time it has started to be used in Europe. How did it all begin? In Europe, the art of dyeing rose to heights influenced by the direct impact of trade, which was instigated by the crusaders and the growing cultural awareness of the Renaissance period. Among the major recent centers for imported dye stuff at that time was Venice supplying Brazil wood from the east, lac and indigo from India from 15th century AD that is after the death of Christ onwards. European dye market was quite big at that time. In 1429, the Venetian dyers guild documented recipes of on different dyes. Wood was grown locally. Wood is the name of a plant, it is not wood, wood in different regions of Germany which gives yellow color from 12th to 15th century after death. That is after the dyeing trade fairs were organized with strict legislation on every aspect of trade. It goes way back to very ancient times that these all natural sources of dyes which have been used even in Central America were also being used in another country where natural dyeing and dyes were being used. Around 1587, the lucrative Monopoly of Cochin dye industry, Cochineal dye industry, because it was specialized dye that was used in that part of the world was controlled by Spain. When the intense calorific value, that is the color value and the relative low cost of the dye, estimated the dye and its uses of an expensive dye extracted from Kermes in England. So, European dyes reached their height in of skill in the 13th century mainly due to the guild system. Guild system is nothing but a cooperative which vigilantly maintained high standards of quality. So, they had very good quality control, quality assurance and France had developed an expensive and efficient dye industry by the 13th century. Further development took place at the end of the 16th century, over 220 master dyers were listed in Paris alone. By 7th century, the worldwide shipping and trading network allowed the import of the dye stuff from all parts of the world to Europe. In 18th and 19th century, the practice of colonialism improved supply of foreign dye stuff and the industry revolution made huge demands of large scale production of natural dyes. So, this is how the evolution of dyes even took place. How their trading started enhancing and how this colonial system enhanced the supply and the industrial revolution helped the huge demand. Development of natural dyes. The development of natural dyes took place at the same time after the technique of weaving had been discovered in about 5000 BC. 
In India, the use of natural dyes for dyeing, painting and printing goes to prehistoric period. The Ajanta paintings which I mentioned dated as far as 1st century AD were painted with natural dyes. Time and again I am mentioning about the Ajanta Elora painting because they still exist and you can go and take a look at the beautiful, beautiful colors from nature which are still existing. These paintings are the evidence of use of colorful garments worn by men and women of that era. India's role in the history of natural dyeing. Natural dyeing as a part of Indian culture, we have seen that you know that in the history so many countries have participated, but what has been a very significant contribution from Indian culture is the art of natural dyes. Natural dyes are not only especially from the Indian culture point of view, they have been a very special uh, object for study. It is an ancient craft rich in the history and tradition. The first color used for textile were probably little more than stains, white, yellow, yellow, orange from turmeric, saffron and anato and pinks and rose pinks from safflower were undoubtedly used quite early. People used these dyes directly without any chemical processing as crude mixtures of color. As development took place among the civilization, man discovered several sophisticated procedures for dyeing textile. Yet there is a great need of research to be done in this field. So, it is still being a lot of research is being done and that is what history tells us. The history of natural dye uses in India is rich and dates back thousands of years. India has been renowned for its vibrant textile tradition with natural dyes playing a crucial role in the creation of colorful fabrics. Just as to give you an overview of the history of natural dyes in India alone, indigenous knowledge, the indigenous communities in various regions of India have been, have long processed knowledge of natural dyes derived from plants, minerals and even insects. This knowledge was often passed down through generation within artisanal communities. Ancient civilization, ancient Indian civilization such as Indus Valley civilization which is 33,000 BC to 13,000 BC are believed to have used natural dyes for coloring textile. Archaeological excavations have unearthed evidences of dyed fabric from this period. Traditional techniques. Indigo, one of the most famous in natural dyes associated with India is indigo. Indigo dyeing has been practiced in India for centuries with historical records indicating its usage dating back to 2500 BC. India was a major center for indigo production and export during ancient and medieval times. Modern dyes, that is dyes which require modern and which I have already mentioned a substance that fixes the dye to the fabric were also prevalent in ancient India. Various substances such as alum, iron and tannin rich materials were used as moderns to enhance color fastness and brightness of the dyes. We had traditional techniques. Indian artisans developed intricate techniques for dyeing textile using natural dyes. Methods such as tie and dye which is also called bandhani, resist dye such as batik and block printing and ikat weaving were practiced across the different regions of India and we have very rich heritage of that, each with its unique style and motifs. Regional variation. We were very fortunate, different regions of India developed their own repertoire of natural dyes based on locally available materials and cultural preferences. 
For example, in Rajasthan, artisans use dyes derived from plants like henna, pomegranate and madder root, while in Tamil Nadu, dyeing techniques using indigo, natural indigo was more prevalent. Decline and revival. With the advent of synthetic dyes during the colonial period and later the industrial revolution, the use of natural dyes in India declined significantly due to their perceived inefficiency and the cheaper cost of synthetic alternatives. However, in recent decades, there has been a revival of interest in natural dyes due to the environmental concern and a growing appreciation from traditional craftsmanship. Contemporary scenario. Today, there is a resurgence of natural dyeing practices in India, driven by a desire for eco-friendly and sustainable alternatives to synthetic, to synthetic dyes. Artisanal communities, NGOs, designers are working to, together to revive traditional dyeing. Techniques preserve indigenous knowledge and promote the use of natural dyes in the textile industry. Overall, the history of natural dye usage in India is a testament to the country's rich cultural heritage, artistic tradition and deep connection with nature. So, for we Indians, we already have a rich heritage of using natural dyes. All we need to do is to start reusing it and that would make the whole dyeing process very eco-friendly and sustainable. Historical evidences of using natural dyes. There are several historical evidences that attest to the extensive usage of natural dyes in India throughout its history. While some of these evidences may be archaeological finds, others are documented in ancient texts, literature and artworks. For example, Indus Valley Civilization, which I mentioned a while ago, archaeological excavation at sites such as Mohenjo-daro and Harappa have unearthed fragments of dyed cotton fabric dating back to Indus Valley Civilization which was from 3300 to 1300 BC. These findings indicate that natural dyes were used by the inhabitants of these ancient cities for coloring textile. Ancient texts, ancient Indian texts such as Vedas, Ramayana and Mahabharata contain references of the use of natural dyes. For instance, the Rig Veda, one of the oldest scriptures of the Hinduism mentioned the use of plant based dyes such as turmeric for coloring textiles. Medieval text as testimony, Ajanta cave paintings, Ajanta caves in Maharashtra dating back to the 2nd century BC to 6th century BC features exquisite frescoes depicting scenes from daily life including people engaged in various activities such as spinning, weaving and dyeing. These paintings provide usual visual evidences of the use of natural dyes in ancient India. Medieval texts, also the medieval Indian texts like Arthashastra written by Chanakya around the 4th century BC contained description of dyeing techniques and the use of natural dyes for coloring textiles. These texts provide insight into the importance of dyeing and textile industry in ancient and medieval India. Travel accounts, accounts of foreign travelers and traders who visited India throughout history also provide evidence of the widespread use of natural dyes. For example, the writings of Marco Polo who travelled to India in the 13th century mentioned the production and trade of indigo dye in, the, in this region. Historical artifacts, artifacts and artworks of course speak for themselves. 
historical artifacts such as dyed textiles, pottery, fragments and artifacts found in archaeological sites across India provide tangible evidences of the use of natural dyes by ancient and medieval Indian civilizations. Additionally, scriptures, paintings, murals depicting dyed fabric and dyers at work also serve as evidence of the importance of natural dyes in Indian culture. Colonial records, colonial era records including accounts of European traders and administrators often mention the trade and production of natural dyes such as indigo, madder, safflower in India. These records highlight the significance of natural dyes in the economy and culture of pre-colonial and colonial India. These historical evidences collectively attest to the long-standing tradition of natural dye usage in India, which has been an integral part of the country's culture, heritage and textile tradition for millennia. These are some of the colors that were being practiced and some of the you know pictures that I could get from the internet to show you that how these colors are still preserved and can be seen. There is also a book called The Colorful Pass which shows these in great details. In case you want to take a look and understand the history of natural dyes, you will find a great deal of information in this book. There are examples of resist dyeing and these were available only because they were preserved carefully. Having understood the history of natural dyeing, one can understand that the history of natural dyeing goes way back to 3000 BC at least onwards and over a period of time the dyes, new dyes have been added to the range of colorants. New processes have been preserved and developed. Some processes have been upgraded and natural dye what is currently available is very, very advanced and is now available for proper uh, uh, characterization of the colorant, how it can adhere to the fabric and that entire technology is available. But why we had to learn the history of natural dyes is because we should be appreciative of the people who did such basic sciences at a time when nothing was available. We are in a much better situation where we can do lot of research because the technology has advanced and we are still continuously striving for making the processes even more cost effective, more consistent and therefore, the dyeing process has become very effective. So, what I am trying to draw the attention to is that India has had a great cultural heritage of natural dyeing and we all should now collectively advance towards the natural dyeing process and use it as a dyer because synthetic dyes are extremely, extremely harmful and in order to replace synthetic dyes, we should revert back to what was our traditional ancient technology of using natural dyes. With this, we have come to an end of this lecture and I would now say thank you.